And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 10th. Cristobal still a tropical depression as it navigates towards the Great Lakes and Invest 98W getting stronger and blowing up more convection today. Day 162 of the year 2020, 28 storms have formed so far. Day 10 of Atlantic hurricane season, Cristobal there in an unfamiliar location you might call it and a 10% chance for that area of interest near Bermuda. We've dropped the one in the Southern Caribbean now. Um, the Eastern Pacific, nothing active here. Day 27 now. We're still waiting for Boris, that second storm, which uh, doesn't look like it's going to be on the horizon either, so might be waiting a while there. In the Western Pacific, 98W now we're giving a 70% chance of development, um, and we are expecting it to become a high-end tropical storm, possibility of it becoming a Category 1 typhoon. No systems active in the Southern Hemisphere at this time, with those end of, end of season animations coming up in the next couple of weeks. So here is Invest 98W right now, 30 mile an hour winds, pressure 1007 millibars, CDPS stage 3, just 54 miles east southeast of Borongan City on Samar, 11.4 uh, north, 126.3 degrees east. Now we're expecting it to interact with another system that, so it will delay its tropical storm status by the looks of things but it will make landfall most likely in Luzon as a tropical storm and still be a strong tropical storm or maybe even a typhoon by the time it reaches the coast of China just west of Macau on day 5. In the North Atlantic you can see that swirl there, uh, Cristobal moving out of shot now, it's so far north. Uh, that little swirl, that's that 10% area, really not looking anything exciting at all. Elsewhere in the Atlantic, things looking pretty quiet. You can see a lot of uh, interesting weather over the Central Caribbean, uh, Central American area, I should say. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico now extremely dead after in the wake of uh, Cristobal. Again, looking at the Panama, Costa Rica area there in the Eastern Pacific, you can see um, lots of storms in terms of thunderstorms, but nothing in terms of any tropical development. And it would, of course, be very rare to see anything form in that area. Further to the west, there's a lot of, lot of just uh, white noise, really. Things trying to develop, but not really. In the Western Pacific, it's also a pretty complex situation. You've obviously got the obvious... Um, area of convection which is moving over Samar and Leyte right now but towards the northeast there's another little swirl that we've been monitoring for the last few days and the model's suggesting that something's going to come around from the right hand side and will eventually become the dominant circulation as it becomes a tropical storm. The South Pacific looking fairly quiet, uh, a few blobs of convection around there, Papua New Guinea um, but generally looking pretty quiet and the Indian Ocean there is an enormous system trying to form but it's so large that uh, we still not even giving it a 10% but it could deliver uh, locally heavy rainfall amounts over areas that have already been affected by Cyclone Ampon this year. Sea surface temperatures are actually cooling a little bit in the eastern Pacific as La Nina takes hold a second wave. In the Atlantic also cooling in the Gulf of Mexico obviously after Cristobal. Elsewhere though it's still warming um, and out in the main development region really getting warm over there now. The North Indian Ocean 30 degrees plus generally uh, though a little bit cooler uh, in some areas. The Central Bay of Bengal and the western coast of India where Nisaga was last week. And in the uh, Western Pacific there again that 30 degree isotherm continues to expand and ahead of 98W temperatures shouldn't fall below 28. Sea surface temperature anomalies, there they are, looking quite hot across most of the globe. But those cool pools now in the, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and in the equatorial eastern Pacific. So Cristobal still fighting on its last legs. You may think it's a big shock, but usually it's the early season storms that end up lasting the longest in land, believe it or not. Cristobal being one of them. It's just about to enter Wisconsin, moving north from Illinois, and it is still a tropical depression, but I think it will only last another 6 to 12 hours before it turns post-tropical. The Weather Prediction Center still issuing advisories on this system. I believe it's every 6, to 6 hours. The next update would be, therefore, well, if they're doing it every 3 hours, it will be 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time and then 10 
um, which may well be the case, I'm not exactly sure, but you can still see that convection flaring up, but certainly it's transitioning at this point as it interacts with that front off to the west. So, um, crystal ball almost finished. Um, well, these are the old models from Crystal Ball because we don't have the new ones for 98W yet, so there's really nothing to look at. <laughs> so, um, we'll just pass the time for a little while here. You can see the wind shear was rising exponentially almost. Wind shear is good for extratropical cyclones, so after it does that transition, it'll be uh, starting to intensify again, you would think. So, the Great Lakes region could see tropical storm force winds, though, in the form of an extratropical cyclone rather than tropical later on. On June 10th, 1997, we had a Category 5 in the Western Pacific, Nestor. There it is, visible image early in the morning on June the 10th, followed by an infrared image later on that day. Blanca was active in the uh, Eastern Pacific, had just formed, and Kelly was hiding there around the international dateline to the north of the Samoan Islands. Um, and that would eventually curve towards the southwest and intensify. There's another image of Nestor, that later image from an infrared uh, view. So Cristobal still the only named feature right now. Dolly is the next name on the Atlantic naming list. In the Eastern Pacific it's Boris. In the Central Pacific the next name on list one is Hone. In the Western Pacific, and we might be seeing it shortly, the next name on the list, the international naming convention at least, is Nuri. And in the North Indian Ocean the next name on list one is Gatti. In the uh, Southern Hemisphere, if we see another storm in Australia anytime soon, well, it could happen, uh, the next name on that list is Imogen. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, if we get the next storm before the end of the month, it will be named Kundai. Otherwise, it will go back to the letter A. In Fiji, Yolanda is next up there. And that's it for tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow with another bulletin. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.